congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a condition that occurs in approximately one in every 2,500 births. The condition is usually diagnosed during pregnancy with an ultrasound scan at around 20 weeks. It happens when the diaphragm of the unborn baby, that's the muscle that divides the chest and abdomen that's essential for breathing, fails to develop properly, leaving a hole in the muscle. If the hole is large enough, the contents of the abdomen, such as the stomach, gut and liver, can move up into the chest. The diaphragm is repaired after birth, but in severe cases, the presence of the organs in the chest cavity can compress the lungs, preventing them from growing properly while in the womb. These underdeveloped lungs, pulmonary hypoplasia, can make it difficult for the baby to breathe after birth, in many cases leading to the baby's death. To try and improve the baby's chance of survival and long-term outcomes, an experimental procedure called fetal endoscopic tracheal occlusion is under trial. The procedure is performed at around 27 to 29 weeks. A tiny camera, known as a fetoscope, is inserted into the womb and down the fetal windpipe with a small balloon attached. The balloon is inflated with water, blocking the windpipe, and then left in place. The aim is to trap fluid produced by the lungs, which helps them to expand and develop to support the baby when it is born. The balloon is removed before birth at around 34 weeks. Most commonly, this is done using a fetoscope, which is inserted into the abdomen and down the fetal windpipe, before removing the balloon. Another method involves carefully inserting a thin needle, which deflates the balloon. The pregnancy is monitored closely after the procedure, and the birth should take place in a specialist centre equipped to look after the baby. Further surgery will be performed after birth to repair the hole in the diaphragm. As with any surgery, fetal surgery carries risk. In fetal surgery, the main risks are rupture of the membranes and preterm birth. Your clinician will discuss the specific risks of your procedure with you further.